Good morning and welcome to our feast and celebration of the Feast of Corpus Christi. Today's Mass is being live streamed with permission under our license number A728690. So for our prelude today, in keeping with the theme of uh, the body and blood of Christ, we're doing the beautiful uh, hymn In Remembrance, composed by Burl Red and Reagan Courtney. Now we ask everyone to please rise and join us in singing our opening hymn, Glory and Praise to Our God. Trust in his grace. Be thou 
the blessings he bears to those who trust in his way. Good morning, and welcome to St. Gertrude Church as we gather to celebrate the feast of the most holy body and blood of Christ. We come together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of his Son, Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. In the desert, God gave the people manna from heaven. In this celebration, the Lord gives us himself for our nourishment. Lord Jesus, living bread from heaven, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, cup of salvation, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, source of nourishment and grace, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, O oh mighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we worship you living among us in the sacrament of your body and blood. May we offer to our Father in heaven a solemn pledge of undivided love. May we offer to our brothers and sisters a life poured out in loving service of that kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, 
who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is number Psalm 116, Our Blessing Cup. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Sisters and brothers, the cup of blessing that we bless, 
is not a participation in the blood of Christ. The bread that we break is not a participation in the body of Christ. Because the loaf of bread is one. We, though we are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This week, as we've been getting ready for this feast of the body and blood of Christ, it was hard to miss the number of articles in the newspaper about a growing concern for a wave of hunger in the world because so many of the supply lines of food have been so upset, which raised for me the question about our feast, why did Jesus feed his disciples with his body and blood? I think the answer is because 
he recognized they were starving to death and dying of thirst. The food and the drink they needed to satisfy that hunger and quench that thirst could not be purchased in any market, though. What he recognized in them is that their lives were fading away. He had to give them food and drink that would give them life. And because of who he is, what he gave them and what he gives us is the food and drink of eternal life. Today's Feast of the Body and Blood of Christ uses stories from Scripture that remind us how often God feeds his people. From the Hebrew Scriptures in the first reading, it was about the manna which kept them alive in the desert during those 40 years. For Jesus, it was the bread and wine which becomes his life essence. I think often we miss the real meaning. We get caught up sometimes in wondering literally what he meant. However, we have a sense when we are hungry. We know when we are thirsty. But sometimes we lose track of what it is we need to satisfy that hunger and thirst. That is why so often all we seem to know is that we feel an emptiness. There is like a pain. We know something is wrong in our lives. So we grab for whatever will dull the pain. It is not unrelated that the wealthiest countries in the world also have the highest rates of addiction, people trying to numb the pain. Isn't that as well what is happening in our world right now? Hundreds of thousands of people dying and countless millions grieving those losses and suffering their own pain. And some leaders telling us the most important thing is to restart the economy. I think the equivalent would be if someone came up to us in tears because the person they loved most in the world had just died, and we respond by telling them, you ought to go shopping. It will make you feel so much better. The paradox Jesus teaches us is that to satisfy the hunger in our hearts and the thirst in our souls, what we need to do is to give ourselves to nourish others, to give our blood to those who have become so weak. I think we all know stories of how this works. I want to share with you one of my favorites, for many years now, I have worked with a group called Friends of the Orphans. It raises money for the open orphan homes of Nuestros Pequeños Hermanos, which means our little brothers and sisters. They have orphanages in nine countries in Latin America. Some years ago, at the start of a board meeting, one of the board members, Brian, he shared a story about why he was involved in this fundraising effort. He and his wife were visiting the orphanage in Honduras, which is also where their godchild, the orphan they sponsor, happened to be living. It so happened when they were there, it was birthday day, which meant they took all the kids with birthdays that month into the big city, Tegucigalpa, for their birthday treats. The first stop was Pizza Hut. Each of the children was allowed to have two pieces of pizza and a soda. 
What Brian noticed was that his goddaughter and a number of other children were carefully wrapping their second piece of pizza in napkins. When he asked them what they intended to do, it was simple. The second piece was going home with them to share with a brother or sister or friend. Then they went on the second part of birthday day, they went on the shopping part. Each child was given $10 to spend as they wished. In Honduras, for a child, $10 is a lot of money. So they walked with their goddaughter through the open air market, pointing out purses or sunglasses or jeans or hats and barrettes, anything they thought she might want to get for herself but she was not interested in any of them. So they finally asked her, well, what was it she wanted to buy? And she told them she had everything she needed. She really didn't want anything else. Think about that for a moment. A child with no mother or father living in a very poor country but certain, with her friends, she had everything she needed. Jesus gives us everything we need, but it is, of course, up to each of us to decide if we are going to give it to others, and in so doing, discover we are no longer in pain, or are we determined to keep satisfying the wrong hunger and the wrong thirst? We are the body and blood of Jesus. We know this best when we are kind, loving, caring, even to the point of it hurting. And that's the moment when we realize how alive we can be in Christ Jesus. And now let us profess our faith I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became flesh. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now pray in faith for one another and for all the world's needs. That, the nourish, that nourished by the body and blood of Christ, we take the time to look inside ourselves with the eyes of faith, 
to more fully understand who it is we are called to be. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That public officials be guided by the spirit of wisdom and work for equal education, suitable housing, adequate health care, and equal employment opportunities for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we who use our voices and our votes in struggle for justice and peace to speak for those who have no voice and no vote. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those families who during this time of COVID-19 are facing difficult decisions between food on the table or health and safety. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we are thankful that the Spirit of God dwells in our hearts, quickens our step, and inspires us to action. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, and for the intentions of this Mass, Alfredo Lukinskis, Jack Taylor, and parishioners of St. Gertrude's, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you give us lasting food for body and soul. Answer our prayers as we celebrate this Eucharistic feast. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn is Lord Who at Thy First Eucharist. Pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, may the bread and cup we offer bring your church the unity and peace they signify. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lifted them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. At the Last Supper, as he sat at table with his apostles, he offered himself to you as the spotless lamb, the acceptable gift that gives you perfect praise. Christ has given us this memorial of his passion 
to bring us its saving power until the end of time. In this great sacrament, you feed your people and strengthen them in holiness, that the family of humankind may come to walk in the light of one faith, in one communion of love. We come then to this wonderful sacrament to be fed at your table and grow into the likeness of the risen Christ. Earth unites with heaven to sing the new song of creation as we adore and praise you forever. Father, you are holy indeed, and all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age, you gather a people to yourself, so that from east to west, a perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, Father, we bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And profess your resurrection until you come again. Father, calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and ready to greet him when he comes again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an everlasting gift to you and enable us to share in the inheritance of your saints with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God with the apostles, the martyrs St. Gertrude and all your saints, on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Lord, may this sacrifice which has made our peace with you advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Strengthen in faith and love 
your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Pope Francis, our Bishop Blaise, with the bishops, the clergy and religious, and the entire people your son has gained for you. Father, hear the prayers of the family you have gathered here before you. In mercy and love, unite all your children, wherever they may be. Welcome into your kingdom, our departed brothers and sisters, and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now please stand and let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your friends, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Please offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that we should enter under you, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion hymn is Eat This Bread. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you give us your body and blood in the Eucharist as a sign that even now we share your life. May we come to possess it completely in the kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. There is just one announcement, but it's long. This week, church reopened for private prayer times Monday through Saturday from 9.30 until 11.30 a.m. Daily Mass will resume on Monday, June 22nd at 7.30 in the morning. We'll have Masses every day from then on during the week at 7.30. Sunday Masses will resume in church the following weekend June 27th the 28th. Under the new COVID-19 protocols, whenever you are coming to church for any activity, you will need to make a reservation. You can do this directly through our parish website using the Sign Up Genius app, or you can call the rectory office. Initially, that first weekend that we're back, we are limited to 50 people for any one service. After our first full week of Masses, we hope to expand to 15 to 20 percent of capacity, which would allow up to 150 people in church for any one service. This week, every registered parish household will receive a mailing with a pamphlet entitled Tips for All Worshippers, which explains what you can expect when you return to church, along with a letter outlining the procedures, and four makeup envelopes for the months of July through October for your convenience. As our schedule of masses increases, we are still in need of more volunteers to assist the setup, greeting, and cleanup teams 
that are required before, during, and after each Mass. I want to again thank our COVID team leaders, the captains, and all those who have already volunteered. Please consider volunteering to help out at one of the Sunday Masses. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks. 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 Have a great week, everyone. Our recessional hymn is Canticle of the Sun. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, play in the fields, and sing into the glory of the Lord. Praise the Son, the bringer of day, he carries the light of the Lord. Today, we remember those who have left us recently with a beautiful piece from Mendelssohn's song, Without Words. Opus 53, number four. <laughs> 